How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Bush Shipping and welcome back to the house in Pata Morgana where we are continuing along the story of Miguel, Misha, Miguel, what am I saying? Miguel, Michelle and his uh, existence in the house and he's finally come to terms with the existence of the witch's voice. Although she offered to curse someone for him and he refused her, which is of course, as we know, this is all prelude to the sorrow that came later, but this is where we really get to see how events played out from his perspective and why it all made so much sense. That painting, man, that painting was one of those things. I really doubt that his brother sent it to him to try and convince him. I think he did it for his mother only, not for him, but he wouldn't see it like that because he's here by himself. So let's see how this all spirals out of control. From that day on, Morgana's voice became a constant fixture in my life. Curse them. Kill them. Curse them. She serenaded directly into my ear. No matter where I hid or how deep I put my fingers in my ears, her voice resounded directly in my head. Hearing an incessant stream of curses from the disembodied voice was so unreal. So unbelievable that I felt as though I was being dragged away from the realm of humanity. There was an odd, unsettling magnetism in her voice, allowing her malevolence to seep into me. It was downright torturous. Curse them. Revile them. Do you really need to be in your right mind, honestly? Your fixation with holding onto your sanity is what's causing you so much anguish. Admit it. There's more darkness, more seething malice inside you than anyone else. That's why you were the one who res resurrected me. Admit it. You do want to curse them, don't you? You do want to kill them, don't you? No, I don't. I don't want that at all. I've, I've told you this already. You're so desperate to deny it, Michelle. It can only mean that it's true. You would you would be able to maintain your calm if you were truly free of guilt. I do not wish to kill Dieter or Georges, or mother or father. I have no desire to see them dead. Your constant babbling, it's messing with my head. Be honest with yourself, Michelle. You do imagine what it would be like to hold their warm intestines in your hands, standing over their bodies. Uh, no, I don't. That's not what I want. Don't lie, Michelle. You climbed the tower. You opened the door. You sought me. No, I was, I wasn't in control. No, Michelle, you were. Enough! I'm done listening to you. <laughs> now, now, do take your anger out on an uh, don't take your anger out on inanimate objects, Michelle. Do you even know where I am? Where are you? I'm standing behind you, in front of you. Now I am beside you. <sighs> You're just playing around with me, Morgana. Making me, making me for, mocking me for your own amusement. Not at all, my dear. In fact, I consider you a close friend. Why would I mock someone who means so much to me? We are not close. You will come to understand in time that we are very much the same. And when you do, you will also know that I am the only person who truly understands you. Enough. 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 Let it all go, Michelle. Curse it. Curse it all with me. Despise it. Kill it. Make it suffer. Curse it. Please, just stop. And where might you be going, Michelle? Wherever you run, I will always be by your side. Are you going to pray to God to exercise me? Now that's quite amusing, considering I am the child of... I'm not trying to hurt you, Michelle. On the contrary. Stop talking. Please, just stop. I want to set you free from your misery. I 
can't take it anymore. Please, just be quiet. Giselle. Giselle's here. Giselle's here now. Who's there? Um, I am... I am here to deliver your monthly package. Oh, so it's uh, the, the servant. Ah, uh, I see. What? Well, Michelle? Um, is something the matter? I opened the door and there stood a servant of the Bollinger estate. He seemed to be quite perturbed by the sight of me. I must have looked terrible. Morgana's voice, her words, snapped my spirit dry. A human. A normal person, not a witch, or a spirit, or a demon. I knew good and well that these servants would never do anything to help me. He wouldn't believe a word I said, but at that point, his humanity was enough for me to latch on to. Help me, please. Pardon? The, the witch, she talks to me. She never stops talking. I'm begging you, please get me out of here. Let me go back home in your carriage. Please, let me go back. The witch's voice, it's killing me. I won't go away, I can't escape it. Please, I need your help. You've gone mad. What? You're crazy. Uh... See, this is why I didn't want this job! Having to deliver supplies to this darn cursed mountain? Having to get anywhere in the Bollinger's youngest child? N no, no, I am, I am perfectly sane. You sold your soul to the devil! So don't think I'm in the dark about that. No, I did no such thing. You're completely insane. No. I'm done with this darn job. I'm not, it's not worth all the witches, riches in the world. None of it means I have to be around a lunatic like you ever even a minute. Why am I... I am, I am not crazy. I'm perfectly sane. I'm not mad. Michelle, your mind is far, far from sound. I won't hear it. I am not mad, dang it. I am not insane. <laughs> I won't hear it! The witch spent nearly every waking moment of every day at my side, talking and talking and talking about how mean-spirited humans were, how ugly they were, how endless the, an endless loop of visceral that she never seemed to tire of it either. Every single day, on and on and on. She also made a point of reminding me about myself and everything I was trying to get away from. As much as I fought to ignore her and not let the things she said in, she slipped past every wall I put up, or every word warping me. There was no escape. Curse them. Revile them. Remember. Remember the things they did to you. Close your eyes and envision it. Remember. Remember the scorn in their eyes. The way their lips twisted as they laughed. You need only curse them, and you can wipe those reprehensible smirks out of existence. I'm serious. Please stop this, Morgana. Please stop talking to me. I'm begging you. Seriously, can't take it anymore. Sorry, the heater turned on. Oh, now why would you say that, my dear? It's just the two of us in this gloomy old house. I don't see what's wrong with a little conversation. <sighs> Your voice, everything you say is eating away at me. I care for you, and everything I say is meant to help you set you free. So I will continue to say it. You're allowed to hate the people who have wronged you. They don't deserve happiness. Someone who's always smiling for you is someone who's certain to betray you. Someone who values themselves above all will not hesitate to put others' lives on the line. Someone who covets wealth and power will sacrifice his friends and family to obtain it. These are the kinds of people you once surrounded yourself with. I've told you repeatedly that I will not curse anyone. 
Why must you be so stubborn, my dear? I could ask you the same. Why won't you just leave me be? Because I can't stand to see you like this. With one word, you could be free of your pain. But because you insist on shackling yourself to the idea of family, you're making yourself miserable. We are the same type of person, Michelle. The type who has the right to curse others. Regardless of what kind of childhood you had, or how much hatred it instilled in you, Michelle, you are a cursed man named after an angel. You need to realize how twisted you are, and soon... I am not twisted. Do you honestly still believe you're normal? Tell me, what's normal about someone who happily embraces a skeleton? Tell me, what's normal about someone who hacks away at a girl's face with a knife? I... I... You are not normal, and I will repeat it as many times as I have to. You need to accept that. Why must you hold up so tight to your sanity? If you would just let go, you wouldn't have to suffer. No one is going to come and save you, my dear. The only thing you can save you anymore is your loathing. I... We are the same. I am nothing like you. I am, I am not a witch. I am not cursed. I am human. I am human. A man? Yes. A man. With that body? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my dear friend. Let me tell you something you should be quite pleased to hear. Do you know what some say about people like you? Those who are neither male nor female? That they are like unto God. Like unto God? Indeed. You should have been worshipped for your divinity, but instead your family cursed you. You are not human. From the second life was first bathed into you, your fate was decided. No, you're wrong. If I really were wrong, you would not be here now. You would be back home with your family. Perhaps you would have a pretty little wife, living a normal, happy life together. But you have long since strayed from that path. It's well out of sight now. I have not. I am human. I'm a person, a normal person, the youngest son of the Bollinger Estate. I am an ordinary man. No one, not a single person believed me. Not even the witch was willing to consider me human, that reminded my family. The archangel whose name I shared looked down on me. The witch tried to drag me into her world. The past constantly ate away at me. I had been imprisoned in this place for far too long. There's nothing I could do about my body. All those things combined threat combined threatened to break me. I let out a scream and stumbled out of the room in a frenzy. I had to get out of that place. It didn't matter anymore, I was forbidden from leaving the property. I just wanted all of it out of sight. If they wouldn't let me come in home, then I would run away. It was all I could do. I wanted to get myself anywhere that might have been the tidiest bit of light to share with me. I was desperate. Someone! Anyone! Please! Tell me I'm human. Tell me I'm a man. Anyone? Please tell me I'm not cursed. But when I opened the front door, searing light pierced my eyes. Ah! The world quickly went white and I couldn't see a thing. And then... Ah! Ah! My arm began to burn beneath the sunlight. Wow. Black smoke rose from the sizzling flesh. Whoa, 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 what? A sickening stench filled the air. Wait, is this like an illusion? Excruciating pain quickly spread to the rest of my body. Why am I... Ah! Water! I slammed the door shut, restoring darkness. Gasping and groaning, I trudged back into the house in search of water, which I'm sure the witch Morgana observed with a great deal of pity. I don't think you're in need of any water. Take another look at yourself. <sighs> it 
With what little light managed to worm its way into the corridors to guide me, I dragged myself to the chapel, stopping beneath the pale light shining through the stained glass window. Oh. How? I wasn't burned. In fact, my skin hadn't even turned to size but pink. There was nothing wrong with me as far as I could see. Where the, had that pink come from, then? And the distinct stench of burning flesh? Th this is... This is your doing, isn't it, Morgana? I, kn I know what you're experiencing. It happened to me, too. Sometimes enough emotional distress and despair can cause physical pain. The mind and body are much more tightly linked than you think. And your mind is far more damaged than you know. Your poor, poor thing. You have my sympathy, my dear. You sad little, you sad little child. Collapsed on the floor in front of the multicolored window. It felt like the whole world was closing in on me. Or perhaps metamorph metamorphosing around me. I was completely and utterly cornered, and there was no getting around that. The witch left me with only one option. To stop fighting and accept the harsh reality before me. It would make everything so much easier. The whole world said there was something wrong with me, and I was the only one who tried to deny it. So in the world's eyes, it meant there was something wrong with me. I was abnormal. I was irregular. I was mad. I was cursed. I was not human. I was not a man. If I'm not human or male, maybe I should just call myself a witch. I oh. It's very logical, but that makes sense. I did, however, remain firm in my refusal to curse anyone, unwilling to give up the last piece of my humanity. Everything else, I let go of, which took a great deal of weight off me. I stopped caring, and I stopped thinking. I stopped wanting someone to accept me, and I stopped wanting to run away. Sunlight no longer caused me agonizing unseen burns, but in exchange, I became emotionally empty. I discarded my faith and my hope, building a shell of cynicism and closing myself within it. And in time, they became my normal. I began to believe it was I that it, it was what I wanted. Tranquility filled my days. Tread, time trudged onward, almost in an imperceivable pace. The witch's whispers no longer caused me aggravation. And I believe that's when we come across Giselle. Essentially, nothing of no happened over the next two years. At one point, a man with an unusual disease stumbled across the mansion while wandering through the forest. But there was little more to be said about that. Usual disease. Have we heard about that? For nothing at all could have convinced me to care about someone else. I spent much of that time sitting before the fireplace. Hmm... There was that weird, like, half-memory when we went into one of those windows or so, or paintings where, like, someone came up to the estate and met Michelle. Like, we, that was when we first saw Michelle before we went to his story. So maybe that's what that was? I covered a stained glass window with drapes, low to even think about the darn dark archangel. Staring at the dancing flames, I was able to forget the passage of time, watching and blinking as the red and orange tongues flicked back and forth. They seem to space spread outward from the fireplace, consuming me. Whether it be rain, raging infernos of hell or the cleansing fires of purgatory. The thought of being swallowed up and burned by to, to ashes by a massive conflagration was quite pleasant. But those visions never became reality. Tell me, Michelle. What are you thinking of right now? Do you still not want to curse them? Look at yourself, Michelle. Look how you're living. Do you really want this life? Have you ever thought about dying? Michelle, would you like to die? <laughs> That's the right answer. God has said taking one's own life is a sin, after all. That's good, Michelle. You've made the right decision. And I shall be there for you until the very end, my dear friend. Honestly, part of me did desire death. I just didn't have enough energy to take my own life. Fatch, man. Jeez. My mind and spirit were far too decayed. Ah. <sighs> Oh, 
However, in my tenth year, the door opened once more, and time sputtered back into motion when you showed up. Giselle. Everything I'd given up on, and everything I thought I'd lost. Ooh, the music. I really like this one already. And everything I thought I'd lost, it all came back. At first, as you know quite well, I was deeply mistrustful of you. I hated having you around. But if I hadn't met you, in all likelihood, I probably would have continued down that path and become a demon. But you seem more like a rather handsome man. I think when I'm trying to get you- I'm try I think I get what you're trying to say, but my mental image of a witch is definitely more of a woman. So you're not a witch. To tell you the truth, I didn't know who might be here, which had me rather scared. But I think I can make this work. It's a pleasure to meet you, Master. The first chisel out of his frozen heart. After taking care of Giselle, I returned to my room. I was, to be quite honest, dumbfounded. And it was natural, the witch who stroked, stoked the fire of my apprehension. Why would you let that woman stay here? She came from the Bollinger Estate, and we both know how you feel about your family. Chase her out. Give her a little scare and she'll be gone within the day. If you'd rather not, I could always frighten her in your place. A rattling window here, a couple of broken glasses there. Small things like that to accentuate the airy atmosphere. Are you going to say anything? Why do you care about her at all? Oh, now don't be like that. I've lived here too, so why shouldn't I care? I am not fond of noisy people, or sprite, sprightly women like that one. That's something we can both agree on, isn't it? You don't like that woman, do you? The more a person smiles, the less you can trust them. Though I hardly have to tell you that, do I? Stop talking. Now, now, that's not very polite. This is my, this is a family matter. It's none of your concern. I was merely offering to help rid you of a pest. I don't need your help. I will get rid of that woman when I'm ready. But first, I will find out what secret she's keeping. Then I will go back to living in peace. <laughs> Very well, then. That pest has no place in your sweet solitude. Oops. Curse you, hand! <laughs> the world before you now is much kinder. So much warmer than the one you used to know. Well, good luck then. And if you need a helping hand, don't hesitate to ask. Oh, and by the way. What now? You've changed, my dear. <laughs> and I like you so much better like this. I always hated how much you reeked of human. You were blessed with a body like unto God. You were personally created by his hands. I could only dream of having what you have. But you only wanted to deny it. Now, though, you act, you act the part much better. A saint, resurrected by the closest living thing to God. Perhaps this could too could be considered a miracle. <laughs> Morgana. Yes? You are a deranged, delusional woman. Why, thank you. Interesting. Giselle was a woman who smiled a great deal. Her jade eyes seemed to glimmer every time she made a new face. And the more she smiled, the more vibrantly she spoke, the more suspicious I became. I couldn't trust someone who smelled that much, especially not a woman. Smiled that much, especially not a human. Smelled. <laughs> and that way that she kept trying to get friendly with me didn't help that impression at all. I had a hard time believing she honestly wanted to get to know me. I couldn't help but think she was trying to fish in for information. Anyone who tried to get close to me had to have an ulterior motive, like Amy, who had only done so to satisfy mother. Perhaps my mistrust could have been considered paranoia, but even ten years later, flashes of that nightmare would still come back to me from time to time. I don't blame him at all. It would take more than a few attempts of being nice for me to trust this stranger.
Eventually, I came to the realization that she was hiding something, and I convinced myself it was out of guilt. So I wrote Mother, in search of something I could use to tear her down, to get her out of here. I should have listened to Giselle rather than Mother or the witch. But I had confl con conflated her with Amy in my mind, so I was unable to see where, that tr where the truth really lay. I was only able to perceive her as malicious. So instead of her, I put my faith in Mother's words, despite Mother never once doing the same for me. My beloved daughter, Michelle, I deeply regret having to put you in this situation. I never wanted to let the woman get anywhere near you. She is a witch. A terrible, sinful witch. A dreadful, tainted woman. She lay with my husband, with your father. She's a lowly merchant girl who worked her way into our family. So she could exploit your father for money. She committed a grievous sin. The sin of adultery. I tried to have her ex executed, but your father wouldn't allow it. So instead, he had her banished to atone for her sins, unaware that you already lived there. And I could not tell him, either, for that is mine and your brother's secret. I pray you could find it in your heart to forgive your mother for her failings. Forgive me for delivering a witch to you. I would not be surprised if she tried snooping around. She is a ruthless fiend who will do anything for money. Should word of your curse happen to spread? It would surely draw unwanted attention from the church. We have no allies except each other. Michelle, with this letter I have included a knife. The blade has been blessed with holy water, which should allow it to eradicate the corruption, evil, corrupt evil soul of the witch. Hang on a second. I wonder if that blade is still in the mansion somewhere. You don't think that could be the key to, this, to the end of this, do you? A blade that never has touched flesh, never done anything, because I don't think it ever cut Giselle. Blessed with holy water. Interesting. That'd be really cool. I ask you, with all my heart, to send that awful creature back to hell. Sheesh. It was storming that night. Erratic claps of thunder ripping through the sky. Giselle let out a panic scream and shoved me back, and the look in her eyes kicked into motion emotions I hadn't thought I'd lost. I knew that face. I knew that scream. Because that face was once been mine. I had screamed with the same utter despair at the world. Back to the way things were. Yes, finally. It's quiet again. I'm honestly surprised she stayed as long as she did. In a way, her tenacity is rather impressive. Not many would persist for so long in the face of such obvious disinterest. But you, but you know no one would try to get friendly with you without good reason. Information about you carries considerable weight outside these walls. But the look on her face, then. Was that really her just putting on a natch because it revealed her scheming? If you think she was afraid of you, you're mistaken. That's how people behave when their sins are brought to light. She was screaming, though, and she looked genuinely terrified when she knocked my hand away. You're not going to let a woman's screams cloud your judgment, are you? A woman can make a weapon out of anything. Tears, a smile, fear. The day she arrived, you recognized her smile as fake. So surely you aren't going to fall for this. I'm not falling for anything. I just... I feel like I know that frenzied panic. Something doesn't add up. Just nothing, my dear. In fact, what perplexes, what perplexes me... Sorry, I've got a bit of a cold developing and it's getting harder to do her voice. It might cut this episode short. It's why you didn't simply kill her when you had the chance. Are you afraid the sight of blood? The blood of your tormentors has no more worth than, the wild, than a wild boar. You should have sliced her throat without a second thought. Although, I suppose it would have made quite the mess. Now that makes more sense. You were not afraid of hurting her. You merely didn't want a burden of having to clean up afterward. How very like you. Be quiet. Oh, come now. The woman's finally gone. It's back to just the two of us. And you don't want to talk? Silence, please. Mm -hmm. As you wish. I will celebrate your accomplishment in silence, my dear friend. 
I imagine she's out there, half buried in the cold earth by now. I get chills every time I consider where I would be if I had done that, as done as my mother said. If I'd killed you, or if out of the in the forest, you'd succumb to the unforgiving winter weather. Life had never given me much in the way of good fortune, but you coming back, you were being you being alive, was absolutely a blessing. I'm done. I can't take it. I'm through with this whole world. You don't have any idea what I went through out there. How hard it was just to keep myself together. Giselle, I do understand. I know very well how difficult and painful it can be. For no one to believe you. For no one to accept you. I know far too well what it's like to want to scream. But you're done with this whole world. I truly do. That day, for the first time, I saw the past surface. We got to know each other as people. It was nothing more than a single small step. But for us, it was like we'd never, we had moved a mountain. I still remember how light it felt. And it shone through the windows we opened together. It didn't burn. And while this might sound melodramatic, I felt safe in saying, it was probably the gentlest light I'd ever felt in my life. Following my recollection with Giselle, I started turning back into my old self. Well, I suppose that's not quite correct. I felt the comfort and peace within myself I'd never known before. This may be the first time I was really human. Having someone else around, beginning to feel normal, was something I was certain I would never have. It was incredible. Though to someone else, our time together may have seemed frivolous and empty, our conversations meaningless chatter. I'd never thought the day would come when someone would laugh at something I said. But someone would smile at the sight of me. How trivial. Seeing Giselle smile made me happy. Oh darn it. Where'd you go where'd you get off to? Are you here? Are you in the vase? What's with all the racket? Is something the matter? Ah, oh, master. Yes, um a cat. Huh? A cat. A naughty little cat's been sneaking into the cellar the past few days, so I'm trying to catch him. If you happen to come across him, don't let him get away. Right. And what will you do once you've caught him? Well, hmm. I don't want to punish him. That would be mean. If he insists on coming back, I think I'll take him in and teach him how to be a house cat. Y you mean to keep him? Are you not fond of cats, master? I don't mind them, no. There you have. Then there you have it. Oh, it reminds him of, like, what was the cat's name? It was like, like, uh, it was something super cheesy. I remember that, but I can't remember what it was. I hope he doesn't take too long to warm up to us. Maybe it'll help if you give him a name. Ooh, a name. That's a great idea. What should we call him then? You decide, master. You, you want me to pick the name? It's your house after all. So it's only right you would be the one to choose. Not sure I follow that reasoning. What does the cat look like? Mm, well, he's wild, so he's dirty, I guess. And he's kind of got some spots here and there. Is he ugly? Um, I'd say so, yeah. Alright then. Ugly speckles mix seconds. That's really cute. <laughs> Ugly speckles the second. That's a name? What on earth did you want to call that? Something that. And what does mix second even mean? B -b Be quiet. It's on the- it's- it's on you if you run the way, master. It's so cute. My time with Giselle made a normal person out of me. Made me may be able to tell stupid jokes, to get frustrated or surprised or exasperated. I started showing actual emotion. Our silly, meaningless banter became something precious. My heart of stone began to soften. The world she created for me 
was what I had yearned for my whole life. Having lost half of it in prison and spent the other half playing the identity that conflicted with how I felt in my heart, it was the first time I genuinely felt like I was allowed to be myself. Yeesh, you're not a kid, so don't be so picky. It's not good for you. You make a mockery of the culinary arts! I have it quite enough, Master. Sounds like I'm going to need to put your taste buds through some intense rehabilitation. How about this, Master? Play a game against me. And of course, if you're open to it, it doesn't have to end there. We can continue getting to know each other for years to come. Oh, fetch. Oh, Giselle. I thought I did my best not to show it. I think that I treasured our time together even more than you did. I'd latched onto it, desperately refusing to let go. I needed it, and I needed you. Fetch. Fetch, man. Are you listening, Morgana? I can hear you just fine, my dear. Now what brings you all the way up here? You know you can call me from anywhere in the house. My bonds to this tower have been broken. This is a conversation we can only have here. The place where we first met. It's time for us to part ways. My desires haven't changed since our first encounter. I wish to be a person. To be a man? Exactly. When I'm with Giselle, I am that. She makes me into the person I always wanted to be. And now you wish to be rid of me, so you can complete your descent into the realm of the unclean? It's got a point though, I mean, it's everything you wanted. Fetch, it's everything you wanted his whole life. I do. <laughs> you came all the way here just to tell me that. I need this formality. I'm sorry, Michelle, but we are kindred spirits. As much as you may want to deny it. You could be second only to only God, yet you spurn his gift. I am nothing like you. I am human, nothing more. I shall not condemn you for your unyielding resolve. I rather pity you for being so utterly blind. Allow me to make a prediction before I depart, Michel, cursed namesake of an archangel. You may think you're making some sort of progress, but the fact of the matter is, you've gone nowhere. Will that smile of Giselle's be able to withstand your secret? You know better than anyone, and no one can escape except where you are, not even her. You will never be with anyone. I understand that. No, Michel, you don't understand. But you will soon enough. What you have now is not true happiness. It's empty, not but a mas masquerade. And when the night is over, the mask will come off. So if it isn't so what if it isn't permanent, it isn't real? Does being Im imperial make it worthless? Why can I not want something that doesn't last forever? This is the first time. I've ever found joy in my life. Those moments of happiness only serve to worsen the loss. The sweeter the honey, the more desperate when the pot runs dry. Sooner or later you will return to me, begging for my help. And I have every intention of giving it to you. I will not hold this over you either. For when you come to me, it will be the time of your utmost despair. And when your little paradise finally comes crumbling down, you will become what I am. So I will take my leave from your side, in anticipation of that day. Until we meet again, my dear. She was awfully confident things were going to work her way. Oh, hello, Master. I was just looking for you. I had it up, I heated up some wine and thought you might Is something the matter? No. No, I'm fine. Thank you. Uh 
Ah, uh, it's nothing. All I did was warm it over the fire. Are you sure nothing's the matter? I shouldn't be hearing- I shouldn't be hearing the witch's voice anymore. So yes, I am fine. Oh, wow. That's- that's wonderful news, Master. It is. I remember, I forgot about that. She still seemed quite relieved when I informed her the witch would no longer be bothering me. I knew she didn't believe in the witch, but that wasn't what mattered. What did matter was that despite like likely questioning my sanity when I had first told her about it, she had tried to pull to put it to pull away. She hadn't tried to pull away. She treated me the same as before. She never stopped smiling. And that meant so much more than whether or not she believed in the witch. With Morgana's voice no longer constantly in my ears, my life started to feel like some approximation of normal. In fact, I would say it probably was happier than most. Nevertheless, I intended to keep a certain degree of distance between us. For what the witch had said rang truer than I wanted to admit. You will never be with anyone. Having been born to this body, that was my reality, and there was nothing I could do to change it. I had come to accept that. Or so I thought. I wasn't going to covet what I couldn't have. But I had gotten a taste of that sweet happiness. I had started to develop a great affection for that smile. As much as she t I tried to tell myself I was just getting caught up in the moment, the feelings would pass in time. I found myself unable to restrain the swelling of emotions within me. Aww. That's gonna be the thumbnail if I didn't use it already. That day, by the fireplace. I thought it all. I, all I wanted from you was friendship. To have you in my life always nearby. I thought that if we would simply friends, I would still be able to see that smile, even if you were to learn what I was. If that were merely friends, that we'd be able to accept that. So I would keep these things I felt inside <sighs> at all costs. However, with each passing day, with each gentle smile, my affection for you swelled. It reached the point where, as hard as I tried to keep it contained, all it would take is the slightest nudge for it to come spilling out, and it made me desire what was out of reach. I was convinced I had changed, because this happiness had become my every day. I had no right to any such thing, but I came to wish it, that I could be at the center of your life. I yearned for you, and I wanted you to yearn for me. And like the fool I am, I thought that with you, it might even be possible. I don't think he was foolish, but... Aww. Honestly, it's no trouble. I mean it. You just took me by surprise, that's all. I am pleased. It doesn't matter how it turns out. You drew it for me, Master. Whether it's good or bad is irrelevant. I would... I would be happy with anything drawn for me by the man I love. That one word set me into motion. For I had long since fallen deeply and utterly in love with you. And there was no escaping that. Listen, listen very carefully. I, 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 lo I love you. I love you so much I feel like my heart's going to explode. Nevertheless, there was also no escaping my past. What I was knowing I could never truly be with you, that I could do nothing about this body, I pushed you away. But seeing all the color drain from your face, I knew I'd taken, I had to take that step. I thought that maybe you could change my world, if you really did love me as much as you said. Together, we could change everything. We could walk a new path side by side. And so, I decided to trust my heart. I'm in heaven. Oh, I'm so happy I could cry. I 
I too was elated. Giselle, I'm sure you thought I was a kind-hearted man. That my love for you was so pure and chaste. And I wanted to be that for you. But beneath the surface, I lurked in decent desires. Despite saying I didn't want to hurt you, and just having you by my side was enough, my desire bubbled up at the warmth of your skin. I wanted to let that heat take over, so that my hands ran free. I could feel the burning inside me. I longed for intimacy, not just emotionally, but physical. I wanted to lay you down on my bed and satisfy those desires. I wanted to make love to you. Unfortunately, that was not possible. I didn't have the ability. No matter how hard I try, my body lacks the capability to be one with you. I can pray, and I can long, and I can wish all I want, but my body will never be what I want it to be. I am gray, though I have always known my true color. I have no way of becoming it. My heart has always known what I am, but the world refuses to accept it. Every time I claim I'm normal, five say I'm an abomination. Would it really have been too much to ask? For me to be born normal? To let me be who I truly am? Is that really so much to ask? Thus began the change when I learned my father, Antonin, had passed away. George just would, I assume, be busy partaking, ta preparing to take his place. And if what I, he had said was true, then I would be welcomed back to the estate. I would no longer be a demon child, but a member of the Bollinger family once more. Deep down, though, I couldn't completely believe it would actually happen. After 11 years in exile, I had no idea what they felt about me anymore. Why would they even remember the promise they'd made so long ago? Fear that they wouldn't threaten to consume me. But Giselle, as she often seemed to do, put my mind at ease. No matter where I go, you'll be there with me, Michelle. I truly, I am nervous, not knowing what future holds, but not in the scared something bad might happen kind of way. It's more of a jittery, excited, anxious. I'm confident the two of us can overcome anything, no matter what obstacles may come our way. Together we can create an even more wonderful future. Could I believe her? Could I have faith in her wonderful future? That she would always be there with me? That we would return to the estate and finally move on with our lives? That together we could create a future? No, that wasn't a question. I wanted to have faith. I wanted to believe as much as she did. I wanted to believe that even if I was gray, I could have a normal life together with her. She had rescued me from the depths of hell, and now I wanted to make her happy. After taking that step in our relationship, I made numerous attempts to reveal the truth about what I was. But every time I tried, sharp pain gripped my chest and my words faded into nothing before they could reach my lips. I knew that if our relationship were to continue, I would have to tell her ever eventually, but merely imagining her face twisted in disgust nearly crushed me. She was everything to me. And so, as we prepared for our departure, I decided it was time to make some changes. It was time for me to break out of my rut. And what happened next to it depended largely on whether mother and my brothers were willing to accept me as a man. The, co the course of my future was took what was in their hands, in their hearts. If they could accept me, then I couldn't return home. I prayed from the bottom of my heart that, thing would, that, that things would turn out for the best. That my family would accept me for who I was. That they would accept me that, I, that what I had with Giselle. I decided I would tell Giselle everything after I received their responses. And I hoped dearly that she would join me whatever I, wherever I ended up. I couldn't provide Giselle the same kind of happiness a normal man could. But if she and my family accepted me, I would do anything I could to build a happy family with her in my own way. And so, I sat down to write. Dear Mother, There is something I wish to tell you, something that means a great deal to me. So I ask of you, please hear me out. I ask of you, please accept it. Mother, I am no longer bear any resentment for my present lot in life. Nevertheless, 
I would ask you to concede one thing, that I was never cursed, that I was always your son, that I am Michelle, not Michelle. I have found someone whom I care for dearly, a woman, and I love her with all my heart. I would like to spend the rest of my life with her. I do not wish for much, simply to have a quiet life with her, to go through our days together, man and woman. That is the one thing I want, mother. I know you're aware that my body is no longer female. I am a man. My heart is male, and I ask of you to please accept that. I have no grudge with you. In fact, I am incredibly grateful to you for bringing me into this world. With love, your dearest son. But rather than a reply, I received a visit from Knight's order to kill me. Michelle, so tell me, why do you think this is your fault? Was your was it your curse? Your curse? It isn't just the color of your hair and eyes, is it? There's more to it, isn't there? There's something else, isn't there? Can you hear me, Morgana? Morgana! Please say something. Morgana! You're pretentious. Your predictions, they were right. I was a fool and you can laugh at me all you want. So please, say something. Death! Death to the unholy one! Death to the heretic! Death to the witch! Huh. Uh, I want you to answer me, Morgana. Why could I not feel you beside me? You said you would help me when they came for it. Well, here I am begging for your help. Please come back to me just this once. I know you're in there somewhere. Please, before they break down the door. Michelle? I... I'm... I'm all... I'm alright. It's okay, Michelle. I... I'm not scared. You're here with me, after all. I'm fine. It's all fine. So please hold me until it's all over. Please stay with me. Michelle, my dear. Why would you ever believe that fairy tale nonsense? Why would you ever think the wonderful future awaited you? Morgana. Here you are now, wretched, pitiful. For that you have my sympathy. I will help you in your time of need. Oh, finally you speak. Michelle, I can feel the despair emanating from you. You hate it. It kills you. This is how you're rewarded. For fighting to be yourself. You know exactly who sent those knights, don't you? They rejected you, rejected what you are. Hey, Michelle. Are you alright? Are you alright? Your family, unable to accept your body and heart, branded you a heretic and turned you over to the church. Yes, they did. And did you hear what the knights were saying? They've even accused you of being a witch. Taken my sins and placed them upon you. Come back to me, Michelle. Come back to me, Michelle. Come back to me, Michelle. You hate them, don't you? You want to curse them, don't you? You want to kill them, don't you? I shall grant you that wish. Out of your hatred and despair, I shall make, you make my own wish. And that wish shall be a curse upon your family's wicked souls. You'll grant my wish then, Morgana? Yes, yes, absolutely. Tell me what it is you want, my poor little darling. Michelle! Let your contempt flow free. Give me the names of those you want cursed. I want you to protect her. Excuse me? If they find her, she could be accused of abating, abating a witch and executed as well. So please, use your power to keep her safe. You said you would grant me a wish, did you not? That was not the wish I was hoping for. I know, but that's the wish I want you to grant. Morgana! Then offer me something in return. Such a disappointing wish will require a sacrifice. 
Step beyond the door, my dear, and witness ultimate despair. That was my plan anyway. So long as I'm considered a heretic and marked for death, my being alive puts Giselle in danger. Indeed it does. Yeah, here you are, shaking like a scared little child. Of course I'm scared. Well, there isn't a single person who doesn't fear death. Please keep her safe. You're the only one who can help me, Morgana. You have my word. From this moment, I vow to protect her life. Thank you. Giselle, please hear me out. Hear, please hear me out. Giselle. I never thought anything good would become of my life. I never thought I would find anyone who truly understood me, who would be happy to have my love. And for that, I hated the world. I was in constant torment, living in the shadows. But then, a single ray of light shone down on me. Michelle. You, G You, Giselle. You, Oh, that's what she said. She said, Michelle, you, Giselle, you delivered me from darkness. I'm scared, Giselle. I'm terrified. I used to think my life was meaningless, that it didn't matter if I lived or died. But now I can't stop shaking. That's perfectly normal. I'm scared to death, too, but... But what scares me most is losing you. Michelle? So please, allow me to repay you. I said I would do anything for you, so let me do this. I haven't given you anything. I haven't done anything for you. So give me one final chance. Fetch. Michelle! What? What are you doing? Get back in here, Michelle! Why? The door! The door! I can't open it. Michelle! Michelle! Why don't you open the door? Come on, get get back in here. I guess you really can perform miracles, Morgana. I... I don't want to lose you, either. I know that. By doing this, I will bring you pain, Giselle. But I can't make you happy, no matter how hard I try. And I realize that now. Say something. Michelle, you're out there, aren't you? Please. Please don't do anything rash. They're going to kill you if you're out there. Giselle, the witch told me. What? She told me she would ensure your safety. Michelle, she... She isn't real. There's no witch talking to you. It's all in your head. A figment of your imagination created by allevi uh, to alleviate your loneliness. Rest assured, she does not lie. Michelle! I pray someday she will be able to get past this and move on with her life. She needs to know that that's what I want. I have... I have to find the right words. Oh, I'm pathetic. My voice is still so shaky. Please, listen. You are a wonderful woman, Giselle. Spirited true to yourself, deeply sympathetic. You are not to blame for how difficult your life has been. Most of the fault lies with me, and of being a bad misfortune. But that's all behind you now. Once this is over, you can start anew. What are you talking about? So, survive. Live a good life. Fulfilling life. Move past this. Live your life. And always love your family. I know you can do it. That is my wish for you. No, I don't, I don't want that. I want to be with you. No one else but you. I don't want to let you die. There, there it is. Death to the heretic. Death to the heretic. Death to the heretic. Get, get back in here, Michelle. Open the door if I, if I choose my life with you. I'd rather. Your scars will heal. You'll find a nice man and have a wonderful family. Hi. Because you, you have a good family. You have a mother and a sister who love you. If you were to be executed here with me, you would be marked as a heretic as well. And your family would be condemned. I don't want anyone else to suffer that kind of disgrace. 
but I can't tell you any of that. Because I don't want you looking into why I am a heretic. So this is where we part ways, Giselle. Thank, thank you, Giselle, for bringing light to my world. Don't say that. The year we shared together and the months since our relationship blossomed have been the brightest days of my life. But if, if there is a next life, I hope you don't mind if I pray that we're able to meet again. And this time, that we can find each other once more in another world. In a body that better suits me. Michelle! I knew he was going to be here. Michelle. I thought I was prepared. That I was doing something good, something I could be proud of. That I would give my life for her with a head held high. But it wasn't long before I realized that the witch had meant what she had warned me about. When she had said ultimate despair waited beyond this door. It is our holy duty as knights of the church to deliver punishment unto the heathen who made a pact with the devil. You are sentenced to death, your body to be hanged upon a cross for three days and three nights, whereupon your whole unholy flesh shall be purified by the fires of heaven. Why? What are you doing here? I stared up at a knight, eyes wide, for the voice from within the helm, Dieter, belonged to my elder brother. You shall now be executed. Huh. Do you have any final words? I knew well enough the mother was not in her right mind, and while her refusal to accept me had hurt, at the same time I had somewhat expected it. It made sense to me. In her madness, mother had declared me a heretic and reported me to the church. But this... But Dieter... Dieter... Men who wield swords and fight against dangerous enemies, and those who do not protect the weak, women and children. I am here to protect you and your mother. What are you doing here? Why are you not pointing your why are you pointing your sword at me? Are you smiling behind that cold steel helm, frowning or staring expressionlessly? Though your transformation was too much for mother and father to accept. With enough time, eventually everything will go back to the way it was before, just like it did for myself and Georges. None of this is your fault. I was all unfortunate timing. You said that we would all go back to normal eventually. <laughs> Can I trust that even though the whole world says I'm cursed, that you'll always be on my side? That you'll always be my brothers? Can I put my trust in you once more, Dieter, Georges? You absolutely can, Michelle. I swear to God on high. Did your vow have no meaning at all? I spent years here in the dark house waiting, believing you would come through for me. So why? Why are you standing there a half dozen nights at your back, saying I am to be executed? Why? Dieter. Do not cry. Do not, do you not dare cry, Michelle. You're standing here in front of this door as a man protecting the woman he loves. So you mustn't cry. Who? Who is it you're sentencing to death? Michelle Bollinger, or? A demon child, naturally. Or a witch, perhaps. But why? If I'm not an angel sent from heaven, or a demon child, then what am I? What on earth am I? What are you? What are you? What are you? You're... You're a Bollinger. You're our family. And that's all there is to it. I thought we were brothers. Our familiar bonds have long since been severed, cursed witch. Ah. Oh. Now I see, Giselle. This world... Never had a place for me. I was never welcome here. Kill him! Uh, I hit the microphone, I'm sorry.
So many blades pierced my flesh. Dieter's sword in my chest, lances in my arms and shoulders, arrows in the boot, both my legs. I could hardly even tell what hurt anymore. But the pain from within was much clearer. My heart cracked audi my heart cracked audibly before shattering completely. Don't cry. Do not cry. Tears will only make this more painful. Pitiful. So don't you dare cry, Michelle. Don't cry. Cry, man. Cry. I believed in you. D. Dieter. Dieter. When I was younger, I idolized you. Those broad shoulders, muscular arms, gentle eyes. Everything you said. You simply put your pure desire to become a knight. I thought if I could be like you, then I could be proud of who I was. Though that may have faded somewhat after being locked away for so long. My adoration for you never went away. I thought of you, of everyone, would accept me for who I am, and I thought you would celebrate my relationship with Giselle, that you would put those big hands on my shoulders, a smile on your face, and say, I'm happy for you, that you would welcome her into the family, that we could go on out outings together on cloudy days, and maybe she could make something for us. She's a pretty good cook, after all. Georges would riffle through the basket before lunch, and Dieter, Dieter would scold him. I would be there watching, a proud smile on my face, as unlikely as out of reach as I knew it was. I still dreamed of a life like that. I had a faintest hope that when I saw each other again, that dream might come true. Dieter. I put my faith in you. And so my life came to an end. How can this story be so sad? It's so sad on so many levels and so many sides. Every part of it just sucks. It's so good though. I need to stop here. No idea how much more we have, but that's the end of the recollection. Now we have to decide and see if Giselle can accept him still for who he is. After all that, what is going to happen now? It's over. It's terrible. But it's over. Thank you guys for being here today. Thank you so much for joining me on the channel. Um, I'm going to need to think about this one. I don't know. That hit really hard. The first time through that story, it hit really hard. It hurt hard again. I lost it in there a little bit. But it's over now. Thank you so much for being here and listening to me. Um, little channel business. There's two things I want to go over real quick. If you're watching this real just important stuff, really, but it should be fast. First off, um, end of the year. I'm going to do kind of a state of the channel. I'm going to probably think of a cheesier name for it, but i um, going to go over some stuff. Plan for the next year. Um, I crossed a kind of threshold this year. I really feel like I'm actually a channel now. <laughs> Monetized. I've actually received some money from like the work I put in, nothing close to the hours I work, I'm still making pennies on the hour, but it's cool to see that I'm growing and the growth is really consistent. Uh, there's a few things I'm going to do that might change that a bit, <laughs> but um, I want to make sure that things are smooth, that it's a good place for finding good, entertaining content. So 
I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you'll look forward to another year of great visual novels and some other tweaks and twists that we're going to be doing in the future. I got some Christmas presents that are going to push us over, and I'll go over those uh, and why they're so important to me and why it means so much to the channel um, in that in a recap video uh, sometime in the next year, like in the next in the beginning of next year, so like the next week or two, I'm thinking. Um, and there's some big announcements coming with that. But in the meantime, I do want to make sure that I have a good direction to go for for the channel. So if you go to the link down below, there's you will know, take you to our, the Discord for the channel. If you go there, I have a window under the general chat rooms um, called like honest, honest advice or honest like thoughts. Um, I'm opening that up for all of you. Uh, this is a time, great time for me to consider any changes that'll help the content on the channel to either just have better quality or that'll help you consume it more or stuff that you've, you've been wanting to see. Not VNs, like don't recommend games. Like there's a whole section on my Discord for that. But just other things on the channel. Maybe, maybe you want to see something a little bit different. Maybe I should talk more about anime, something I've done in the past. Um, I could do that again. Um, I'm going to have more time this year and I'm going to be working on doing a, a little bit more, but the projects are going to be limited in scope. So I mostly need to know, like, what are the things I can do to continue to advance the channel to make the differences that will make the most impact for you? So for the next few weeks, please go on there. Just leave your thoughts on there. I'm not going to keep it open forever and I can't promise I'll take up all the advice um, running the channel and in life at the same time. It's a balancing act, and I have to make sure I hit that balance perfectly. So while I really want to hear your input, it doesn't guarantee that things are going to change very much, but hopefully we will see some change in the near future. Anyway, thank you for taking the time to listen to that. I hope to hear your thoughts. But until the next video you're watching me, I'll see me next. I'll see you there.